Welcome back. Fentanyl trafficking has become a growing problem in South Carolina and overdose deaths continue to increase. In tonight's Health You, our Intisar Faulkner shares more about this epidemic that is claiming lives right here in the Midlands. One of those lives was Justin Smoke. He died from an overdose linked to fentanyl poisoning. His mother, Janet, sat down with me to share more about her son's struggle with addiction, and she's pleading for parents to talk to their kids before it's too late. I'll see you all soon. I love you. I love you too, Mama. Stay safe. Okay, you too. No, no, no. Janet Smoke didn't realize that was the last time she'd see her son, Justin. If there's one thing I could go back and tell him now, I would say, Justin, don't die on me. I didn't know about fentanyl during those times. The 24-year-old died from an overdose two years ago, and Janet says that her family is still trying to cope. I'm starting to wrap my head around the fact that grief doesn't go away. It's that we learn to, our body heals over time. And we learn to live with that grief and to carry on life in spite of the grief. Now she's left looking back at memories of the son she once knew. He was my little happy-go-lucky boy. He liked to play jokes. He liked to make people laugh. When I think of my young Justin, that's what I think of. Um, the boy that smiled a lot. But Janet said once he hit middle school, things changed. That was the only thing that I noticed that was different, was that he wasn't smiling. He had a lot of anxiety, and he also suffered from depression. Um, I did take him to see a doctor, and he was diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and he was prescribed medication, but he did not like the way it made him feel, and um, it was difficult to get him to take it. And the problems escalated in high school. That's when he started having more severe trouble, um, not just in school, but um, with the law. Janet said Justin visited rehab a few times, but nothing seemed to get through to him. That was the only thing we knew to do was to get him help. He was our son. You know, he needed he needed some intervention. And they did tell us there if his behavior didn't change, he was on the road to becoming an addict, which is ultimately what happened. In his later years, Justin told his mom his vices were Xanax and Percocet pills. I begged him to go to a doctor, and he actually said, I want to do that, but they label me as drug seeking. And the fear of stigma isn't uncommon. Like any other disease process, people need support, they need family, they need friends, um, they also need health care professionals. But the stigma, I think, is a barrier for treatment. Um, and it keeps people from wanting to come to the doctor. Dr. Jared Stone, an ER physician at Lexington Medical Center, says overdose cases have doubled since the start of COVID-19. I've been shocked. There are so many people in Lexington County alone each month that pass from overdoses. The vast majority seem to be attributed to fentanyl. In fact, one study showed one out of 20 people that come to the ER after an opioid overdose are dead within a year. And fentanyl is up to 50 times more potent than heroin and 100 times stronger than morphine and has been introduced into a number of other illicit drugs, including anxiety pills. Dr. Stone says, like Justin, it's very common that someone is absolutely unaware that fentanyl is in the drug that they were using. Fentanyl can show up in anything. My son did not ask for fentanyl. My son did not ask to die. Janet says she often thinks back to that night, wishing she'd known what she knew now. Talk to your parents, even if you don't think that they understand, which they probably don't. I didn't, but talk to your parents. Family is everything, and it's been a tough two years, but I'm starting to find my voice, and I want to be the voice for my son. For Health You, Intisar Faulkner, WIS News 10.